Hey everyone, welcome back to Instrumentation Systems. In the previous videos, we have seen that mainly three methods are used for measurement of low resistances. Of this, we have already covered the ammeter voltmeter method in the last video. In this one, we will study the potentiometer method for measurement of low resistances. So, let's start our lecture. To understand how to use potentiometer method to measure low resistances, we should first understand what is potentiometer method. As we have studied in lecture 2 of this lecture series, it is a comparison method with high degree of accuracy. Here is the circuit diagram of a basic slide wire potentiometer. It consists of a battery, a rheostat, a slide wire, a galvanometer, and a sliding contact or jockey. The slide wire is special as it has uniform cross section and resistance across its entire length. That is, let's say if we divide the slide wire into four equal parts and if the resistance of this section is x, then the resistance of this section will be 2x and the resistance of this section will be 3x and so on. So in short, if the resistance of unit length of slide wire is r, then the resistance of l length of slide wire will be lr. Okay. Now this rheostat is used to control the working current in the circuit and this jockey is used as a sliding contact between the galvanometer and slide wire. Now let's see the working of a potentiometer. For the time being, let me explain it using two cells. A standard cell whose potential is known and an unknown cell whose potential is to be measured. So first we connect the standard cell between these two contacts and now slide the jockey over the slide wire until the galvanometer shows zero deflection. So let's say the galvanometer showed null deflection at this point and we name this point as C. Okay. Also let us name this point as point A. Now the null deflection on galvanometer means that no current is flowing in this circuit. And this happens when the potential difference across length AC of the slide wire is equal to the potential of the standard cell. So we can write V standard which is the potential of the standard cell is equal to I into LAC into R where R is the resistance of unit length and I is the working current flowing through this circuit that is this one and LAC is the length of slide wire AC. Okay. Now let us name this equation as equation number 1. Now we disconnect the standard cells and connect the cell with unknown potential across these contacts. And just like before we slide the jockey over the slide wire until the galvanometer shows zero deflection. And let us name this point as point D. Then V unknown is equal to I into LAD into R and let us name this as equation number 2. Now if we take the ratio of 1 and 2 we get 1 divided by 2 is equal to V standard by V unknown is equal to I into LAC into R by I into L A D into R and we can cancel out this I and R which gives us L A C by L A D. Now from this we get V unknown is equal to V standard into L A D by L A C. So this is our equation of interest. And this is how we find the unknown potential. Okay, so I hope everyone understood the working of potentiometer. Now let's see how to use it to measure low resistances. 
for that we are using a standard resistance which is of the same order of magnitude of our low resistance and is then compared with the low resistance the basic connection diagram will be like this we have a standard resistance s in series with our unknown low resistance x which is then connected to a battery through a rheostat and ammeter the rheostat is used for varying the current passing through these resistances now this power source should be chosen such a way that it is a low voltage high current source we are going for a low voltage because the unknown resistance is a low resistance whose magnitude is less than 1 ohm so in order to pass the required current low voltage is sufficient however we need a high current source because when the current passes through these low resistances it should produce a voltage drop across the resistance that is detectable that is we should have a current that produces a vx and vs of the order of at least 1 volt that is vs and vx should be at least 1 volt now once again this standard resistance s should have a resistance that is comparable with the unknown low resistance x also the current rating of the standard resistor should be greater than or equal to the current rating of the unknown resistor that is i rated of s should be greater than or equal to i rated of x this is to ensure that the standard resistance would not get damaged now the potentiometer comes into picture we will connect these terminals 1 1 dash to terminals a and b of the potentiometer and slide the jockey over the slide wire until the galvanometer shows null deflection this means that the voltage across the standard resistance and voltage across the slide length cd are same so if the current in this circuit is i dash and the current in this circuit is i we can write vs equal to i dash into l dc into r where r is the resistance of unit length of slide wire now we can also write this vs equal to i into magnitude of standard resistance which is s therefore this is i into s we can also write that over here now note that this i will be a constant because once we set the value of rheostat we are not changing it similarly i dash will also be a constant and r is already a constant therefore we can write s is directly proportional to l dc okay and let's name this as equation number 1 now we disconnect these wires and connect it to 2 2 dash and then we position the jockey such a way that the galvanometer shows null deflection and let's name this point as e uh, there was already a point d over here okay therefore just like before we have vx equal to i dash into l e c into r which gives us x directly proportional to l e c and let's name this as equation number two now 1 divided by 2 gives us s by x equal to l d c by l e c or x equal to l e c by l d c into s so this is how we find the value of unknown resistance x using potentiometer method also in case any of you have a doubt on whether there is current in this loop remember that we are initially setting the jockey in such a way that the galvanometer shows zero deflection and what does zero deflection on galvanometer means it means that no current is flowing through the galvanometer therefore there is no current in this loop okay now the important points to be remembered are the magnitude of the standard resistance should be of the same order of the unknown resistance. The second point is that the current should be adjusted such that 
Vs and Vx have magnitudes that are easily detectable. And finally, the accuracy of the measurement depends on the sensitivity of the galvanometer. Therefore, to get a higher accuracy in measurement, we need a galvanometer with good sensitivity. That's all for this lecture. If you have any doubt, feel free to ask them in comments so that either me or some other viewer can help you. Also, if you found the lecture useful, please like the video and also support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next video, we will discuss about Kelvin double bridge method for measurement of low resistance. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.